In previous episodes, we've spoken with Grandmaster Bob Jones and Deputy Grandmaster Hillel Benedict, and it's a pleasure to welcome them back to the program today, gentlemen. Great to be back, Wes. Thanks, Wes. The last time you joined us, we'd taken some questions from our viewers to find out the things they wanted to know about Freemasonry. We've been out on the streets this time to speak to, uh, to people out and about and find out the sort of things that they would like to know. So uh, with your interest, let's take a look at some of the questions that people have. I've wondered why Freemasons wear aprons and jewels. In some ways they look like a mare. Is there any correlation? Is there any connection between the regalia worn by the mayor of a city and the uh, regalia that a Freemason would wear? Uh, not really, only the fact that uh, they're for ceremonial purposes, they're for uh, uh, enhancing the, uh, the ceremony. Um, the mayor doesn't uh, wear his robes on non-ceremonial occasions. We don't wear our uh, aprons and jewels on non-ceremonial occasions. Uh, the aprons are to show the different ranks of the men uh, and the jewels are I'm presuming he's talking about the service jewels that uh, uh, we wear because of uh, different lengths of service that we've had uh, in the craft. Let's take a look at our next question. What are the swords for? Were Freemasons once fighters as well? What's the symbolism behind the swords that Freemasons are sometimes seen to be carrying? Certainly not symbolic of being fighters in the past. They're more ceremonial and used in a traditional sense to form a guard or an escort, like many dignitaries would use. On to our next question. Is Freemasonry like a church? The question about the connection between religion and Freemasonry often comes up. Um, is it like a church? No, not at all, Wes. Uh, it's more a fraternity of men uh, who uh, gather uh, in a uh, friendly uh, environment uh, for personal development um, and a, a number of other things. We, we do ask that everybody that wants to join a lodge has a belief in what we call a supreme being. Could be a god, could be something else, but something that they acknowledge. And it's consistent with whatever religious beliefs an individual may have. Does Freemasonry have its own holy book, for example? No, it does not. No, we, we th there's, uh, last count there was eight or nine or ten uh, books that we would uh, more than comfortable with. The Bible, obviously, uh, the Koran, a number of, of books of the faith of the man who's uh, uh, joining Freemason or is a Freemason. We acknowledge all of those uh, books of faith. Well, thank you for clearing that up for us. Let's have a look at the next question. Why do Freemasons wear jewels if they're all meant to be equal? So part of Freemasonry is that it, uh, it talks about the equality of its members. Um, so what do the jewels represent? A number of different jewels mean a number of different things. Firstly, there's a, a service jewel. If a man uh, has served for uh, 25, 40, 50 years uh, of service to Freemasonry, then there is a particular jewel that he's allowed to wear and we in fact uh, make quite a presentation on a, a 50, 60, 70, uh, 75 year jewels. Uh, uh, that's a lot of service to any organisation. So hence we, uh, uh, we make a bit of song and dance, a bit of a fuss about that man. He, uh, he deserves that. Uh, other jewels, uh, our homes have a jewel uh, that is presented for uh, donations made to the, to the homes. Um, and it's in recognition of the service of the lodge or a particular individual. Uh, there's a number of different uh, jewels. Uh, it's a bit like, um, you know, a returned serviceman wearing a, a medal from Afghanistan to show that he served in Afghanistan as against Vietnam or World War II or whatever. Uh, there are, there's distinctions in our jewels for different things, services or for uh, service to the community. Let's hear our next question. I know what Freemasonry is, but what do Freemasons actually do? So there's a gentleman who's familiar with the organisation, but not aware of what the members actually do when they go to lodge. Hopefully you can help in answering a question like this. I, I, I'm very pleased to, to get a question like that, because I think it shows to me that the man has an understanding of the Freemason brand, um, that what the square and compasses uh, stand for, perhaps. Um, without knowing the nitty gritty of what we do behind our closed doors. So firstly, uh, recognition that our brand uh, means something um, uh, is, is good for me as the Grand Master. Uh, what, what Freemasons do, um, I'll allow the, the Deputy to expand on. A, a typical Freemason would attend meetings on a regular basis. 
Most people would attend a meeting at a lodge once a month for approximately four hours. Those meetings have business components to them. They have some ceremonial components. They have uh, members that join a particular lodge and there's processes they go through. They get involved in social activities outside of regular lodge meetings and they'd get involved in community activities and charity work as well. They're just regular members of the community. Thank you for that. Let's push on. My friend's father is a Freemason, but he doesn't tell us anything. Uh, why can't he disclose what he's doing? It seems a lot of Freemasons are reluctant to talk about their membership and what that involves. So uh, why can't this particular member, or why might this particular member not feel free to speak about uh, what he does? I think it's a, a part of society where some people are um, comfortable about talking about their work or their family life or uh, whatever organisation they're in, and, and some men and, and women aren't that comfortable. Um, I think, uh, presuming that the, 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 uh, the, the father figure he's talking about is an older gentleman, I'm presuming that, that until a couple of decades ago, no one spoke about Freemasonry. Um, part of what this show was all about, this series is all about, is telling the world what Freemasons do and, and what we stand for, not, uh, not being secretive about it. Um, and hopefully this series will you know, show everybody and show this young man, um, answer some of the questions this young man may very well have had of his uh, friend's father. Um, it's, it's symptomatic, I think, of uh, the older generation of Freemason who have kept the secrets, kept the windows closed, um, and uh, what the, the newer generation of Freemasonry is now opening up. So it's more a reluctance or a humility on the part of the member rather than a requirement of the organisation that members don't speak about what they do. Yeah, I think we probably believed in, in, in a, a bygone era, we've probably believed that we are a secret society. We've probably believed that ourselves. So, you know, uh, I hear it weekly, daily, about, oh, my father was a Freemason, but he never spoke to me about it. He used to sneak out of the house with his black bag and, and his gabardine coat back in the, the old days. Um, there was absolutely no reason to do that, except you know, they, they, they did it. Um, and uh, today we, we talk more openly about Freemason because we're proud of what we do. Not that those older generation weren't proud of what they did, they just didn't tell anybody about it. And as you say, that's a big part of the inside story and the reason behind this uh, particular program to show people what Freemasonry does do. Absolutely. We've got a great story to tell and we've had that same story for 300 years. Um, it's about time we told it. Thank you for that. Let's take a look at the next question. Are there still secret handshakes within Freemasonry? Ah, uh, the old chestnut, Wes, the old chestnut. <laughs> it does come up quite regularly. Absolutely. The answer is yes. Uh, no doubt, we have a, 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 a number of secrets, um, but as we've explained in previous episodes and hopefully uh, uh, quite clearly, they are purely uh, as a matter of recognition that I know that you're a Freemason and you know that I'm a Freemason. Once we get past that point, uh, there is no, uh, no secrecy about it at all. Um, so yes, we do have a, a secret handshake um, and I'm not at liberty to tell you, I've taken an oath not to tell uh, your viewers uh, and that means that you know you can trust me. It makes up you know, the first meeting point of a, a man to another man. Um, after that it's, uh, it's inconsequential to uh, what Freemasonry does and what we stand for. Okay, thank you again for that and for clarifying a question that's in many people's minds. Well on behalf of the viewers and it would seem the public, thank you for helping answer some of the common questions about Freemasonry. Most Worshipful Brother Bob Jones and Right Worshipful Brother Hillel Benedict. Thank you Wes and could I thank the public uh, for their interest and obviously their probing questions. It's been very informative for us as well, thanks Wes.